This video covers using the Grade Expectations command line interface to initialize a new Grade Expectations project. We do that from the root of our version control directory. In, in this example project, we've got some notebooks, some uh, Python pipeline files, as well as a single data asset, Notable Works by Charles Dickens, that's been divided into three different batches, uh, you know, raw, modified, and a corrupted one. To get started, we just run the init command and doing that will offer to create a new Great Expectations directory where we can store the configuration and other artifacts necessary to integrate Great Expectations into the project. Note that there is a single directory here called uncommitted that we recommend not be a part of your version control. And by default, that's gonna be flagged in a new git ignore file that we'll add for you. The first step is to add a data source. Data sources bring together information about the compute environment where expectations are evaluated and the specific batches of data that we have in our data application. There are three kinds of data sources available, pandas data frames, uh, relational databases, which we connect to via SQL Alchemy, and Spark data frames. Let's move forward with the pandas local uh, data frame in this example. So. The next part of a data source is called a generator. The generator is used to create specific batches of data. The default generator that we'll configure using the init command for pandas is one that will create batches from just files of data and group them into data assets based on the subdirectory that we're in. And that's appropriate for the example that we had in this case. So we can create our uh, generator and point it at the data directory, which we saw earlier in our project, and that'll give our new data source uh, a simple name. Now that we've created the data source, we can profile it. Profiling it generates candidate expectations and documentation. The expectations created by profiling capture a wide range of statistics and other characteristics of the data set that could be useful bases for expectations in the future. And they also form the basis for describing a data set really effectively in documentation. Um, so let's go ahead and run that profiling step. Now that we've done that, Great Expectations will offer to move the results of profiling into our uh, fixtures directory. So uh, uh, we're moving now the result of a, of a first validation over to fixtures to, form, to serve as a baseline for what we might expect or see in a data set. Now before we do that, we need to verify that it doesn't have any sensitive information in it. So let's just take a look at what's happened so far. We've created the Great Expectations directory that like, we talked about. And now inside the uh, expectations subdirectory, we have as a part of a namespace, so the namespace consisting of the uh, data source name that we configured, our generator, uh, the data asset, specific data asset name, and then the name in this case of the profiler that we used, we've got a first baseline suite, uh, suite of expectations. Now in our uncommitted directory, we have a single validation run, so that run corresponding to the batch that we just did as part of profiling, where we have the exact same uh, hierarchical namespace and the validation result. So if we take a look really briefly at what's in the uh, expectations, we'll see that we have um, uh, the expectations that were created by profiling are generally quite loose. Um, so, you know, we'll see, uh, for example, the unique value count between null and null, meaning that we don't have an expectation of what it is, but we would like great expectations to compute that statistic and make it available as a part of the profiling. What that means is that if we switch over and uh, look at the result of the actual validation run, uh, we'll see the uh, evaluation of each of those expectations that have now produced uh, the specific statistics relevant for evaluating that expectation. So uh, in this case, the unique value count uh, was observed to be 38 in that particular column. And this addition, in addition, as a part of the uh, validation result, what we see are some uh, information about the overall uh, data asset that we just looked at. So again, we, we've got that hierarchical name that we've described that the data context will use to identify the data source, generator, and data asset, as well as the name of the specific expectation suite that was used to validate uh, the, the data asset and create this validation report, as well as the specific 
information about this particular batch. So the file that uh, formed the basis of it as well as when we uh, grabbed that file. So now that we're comfortable that there's no sensitive information in that validation result, we can go ahead and agree to moving it into our fixtures folder and uh, building documentation on the basis of that. Now that that documentation is built, uh, we can just take a look at, at it in uh, our web browser. So uh, in this new, uh, newly rendered do document, we have just a single data uh, asset and we can see an overview of what's there. So for each of the columns, the expectations have formed the basis for uh, describing the number of distinct values, quantiles, a variety of different statistics, example values, histogram, and other things that are relevant. Now the key thing is that each of those pieces of information is now backed by an expectation.